In this tutorial, I will show you how to take one of our strip pairs, crop it down to a single strip using Photoshop elements and import it into Darkroom Booth 3 for use. To start, we're going to begin with our Darkroom Booth starter files. This is our recommended way and the only way that we officially support these days for working with Darkroom Booth. We'll find this underneath of the uh, support menu knowledge base and uh, the knowledge base article is recommended template installation for Darkroom Booth. There's a short video here. Um, this video, in fact, will show up also here. What we want to do first is download the starters kit. We next are going to want to extract it. I use a third party program called 7-Zip, but the Windows zip file will work just fine too. Inside here we will see every unique layout style that we use in the design shop in XBDR format. Now there are no graphics, but there are thumbnails to help you see what these look like inside of the Darkroom software. So next we're going to go into Darkroom. We're going to go to our event. Um, I'm just using samples here. Under our photo print photo 2x6, we're going to click choose. Go to add and we will browse to our newly opened folder. PBO template starters. We will click add all and that will bring every design in. For the particular design that I have already downloaded, it is a 3-up uh, photo strip. I've already extracted it here. We'll go in and there's always a subdirectory in the unique darkroom files. And here we can see what the two strip looks like. Now we're only gonna have a single, so we just wanna go here and locate the similar looking one, which is at the top. We'll click this. And you can see we have three photos. So next we will want to edit our design so that it matches whatever our uh, event is meant to say. To do so, we're going to use Photoshop Elements in this tutorial. So I'm going to open Photoshop Elements. And I've already got it open here, but let me uh, close it and we'll walk through this step again. We're going to go to Open. We're going to want to browse to the directory that we've extracted our template to. And we will select the template-elements. PSD file. Now depending on settings you may not see the extensions, it may just say template elements. When prompted with uh, this dialog, this means that you do not have the fonts installed. What you need to do is to uh, open up the readme file. Inside the readme file as you scroll down you will find fonts used. Clicking these links will take you out to the websites where you can download these fonts. Once you have installed the fonts, which I'm not going to do in this sample, just click OK here. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Expert. What I am looking for is the layers. So we will open up layers. And here we have lots and lots of layers. These allow us to adjust pretty much the every element in the design. 
Now all of our designs, the PSD files, will have a bleed. This is uh, tells you where the safe zone is. Anything inside of the pink lines should print properly on a uh, die sub printer. You run the risk of it being cropped off if it's into the pink. In the, sake, in, uh, the case of dark vermouth, this really doesn't matter as they do not honor bleed and want you to have a generic sized file. So let's go ahead and prepare this for darkroom booth. The first step we're going to do is go into image. We'll go to crop. We're going to go to Image, Resize, Canvas Size. Now this is going to come up in inches, but we're going to go ahead and change this to pixels so that we can see more exactly what we're working with. So this is going to be a two-step process. We're going to do canvas sizing twice to get proper alignment. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to trim bleed as darkroom does not use bleed. So that is going to make our image 1200 by 1800. We'll click OK here. We'll be prompted about it clipping. We are good with that. So we will click proceed. And now bleed has been removed. Next, we will come back, resize, canvas size. And now we're getting ready to make our single strip. So we're going to do once again, go to pixels. This time we're going to go with a left centered anchor, or if you want the right strip and not the left strip, because we do have variations of the two, we will go right center. For this example, I will go left center and we'll use the strip on the left. We're going to go in and we're going to divide the 1200 in half and set it to 600. Click OK and then proceed. And now we have a single strip that is ready for darkroom booth use. Now if you want to change things such as colors, like let's say this badge background here, you're going to use a hue saturation to do this. There's a layer that's above every editable color. Double click that. We're going to use Colorized. Now, as you can see, this is a white background. White can be a little difficult for people, so it's a good example here. We're going to bring the lightness down and the saturation up, and then you can see we have much, much more control over what color we'd like to make that. So we're going to adjust that uh, to a uh, color that we would like it to be. And then we can just close that. Now, if you don't want that and you want to revert quickly, you can turn off the layer, it has a hue saturation. Let's see. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, to go ahead and um, save these files out. So we structure our templates as a background and an overlay. We do these separately. And everything hinges off of the coordinates layer. In older versions of Photoshop Elements, layer groups were not supported, so the photo booth or the Photoshop file that is named template-elements has no layer grouping. That's why we have all these individual layers. So what we want to do is locate the coordinates file. So the coordinates is what we're seeing here in the boxes. If we hide that, you can see those go away. So we're going to do a two-step process for saving. And the first one is going to be we need to turn off layers below this so that we can save out our overlay. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to turn off each of these major layers. Next, we're going to come up to File, we're going to do a Save As, 
We're going to come here and select a PNG file format. And we are going to overwrite our overlay.png file. Next we'll want to return the layers that we had hidden back to visible. After doing so, we're going to now prepare to save the background.jpg. And what we're going to do in this case is we're going to hide all layers above the coordinates layer. And now we're going to go File, Save As. This time we're going to select JPEG. We're going to select our background. We're going to save over it. We're going to choose 12 as our quality. That way we have the highest quality file we can have. That can be the best crisp prints. Once you've done with that, you are done inside of Photoshop Elements. Now we want to return to Darkroom Booth. From here, we're going to add our artwork. So go add artwork, single graphic, we'll browse. Let's go to downloads where I've stored this, but it, it'll be wherever you have. I'm going to start with the background, bring that in. You can see that fully fills. As you can see, that has now covered our photos. What we need to do is over here, grab that file drag it all the way to the top that'll put it to the background next we're going to do artwork again this time we're going to select overlay click open okay and there it is now we have a print ready strip set for use in darkroom this will go much quicker once you've done it a couple times